News Talk 1250, KBRF, listen anytime, place with the new Fergus Now app on your phone at 1035, currently 50 in Fergus Falls. And it's now time for one of our favorite shows throughout the month. It is time for Chamber on the Air with Lisa Workman. Hi, Hi. Going, Lisa. Hi, Dave. Glad to uh, be here today. And uh, you know what? It is a fantastic day out today. We're so happy to have you have tuned in to Chamber on the Air. This is a great chance for us to feature some of our chamber members and uh, things that they have going on. And we are, we've, we've been chatting before we went on the air. And I think our theme for the day is like renewal and construction and new things and kind of, you know, it's, it's so fitting. We didn't really plan it exactly, but you know, with it being springtime we all feel like that new sense of energy and all kinds of great new things going on in and around Fergus Falls and I invite you to uh, check out the Chambers website where you will be able to find out more details about each of the Chamber members that we're visiting with today. You'll also be able to check out our events calendar which will give you details on things that are going on in and around the community and if you are looking or if you have a student who is looking uh, for a job or a career change, we have a great jobs page. And there are lots of those uh, new things coming up, too. So I invite you again to check out our website at fergusfalls.com. Uh, you'll find out events for some as I said, new, we've got two ribbon cuttings, possibly even three ribbon cuttings going on next week with the chamber. On Monday afternoon, uh, we will celebrate an expansion of a new facility for Vector Windows. That'll be at Monday at 3 o'clock with a ribbon cutting. And their new facility is... Kitty Corner or Caddy Corner, depending on how you say it, from the Minnesota Motor Company on uh, Pebble Lake Road and Highway 210. Uh, you can check that out, and they'll be uh, providing tours after the ribbon cutting, and that's on Monday. And then scheduled for Friday afternoon at noon will be downtown Fergus Falls at the Refillery, uh, which is Creative Handmade Goods Soap Works. Uh, they are doing their grand opening for their refillery the day before um Earth Day, so you want to check that out. If you uh, if you love bath and body products and things like that, check out the refillery. So those are two of the ribbon cuttings that we have scheduled. We're also going to uh, celebrate spring with a chamber member mixer on Wednesday, April 19th from 4.30 to 6.30, and we will be out at Pebble Lake Golf Club and Palmer's Bar and Grill. We'll be serving up some fantastically delicious appetizers, playing some games. If you want to play some networking games, you can register for door prizes, or you can simply have a cocktail or a mocktail and uh, hopefully enjoy some sunshine next week at our member mixer. Again, you can register for that on our website at fergusfalls.com. And it was hard to believe that we were planning a member mixer at the golf course when we were planning it. There was probably 18 feet of snow out there. So hopefully that will continue to um, melt. But speaking of new and revival and renewal, uh, we are going to be visiting next with Kate House with Bethel Church, and they have just completed or recently completed an enormous project that probably started as ideas probably a decade ago, but there's been so much growth uh, with Bethel Church and church community that, in fact, today we'll be celebrating with an open house there. So, Kate, welcome to the show and tell us what's happening at Bethel. Sure. Well, uh, you know, you've seen the building going up for uh, probably over a year. Uh, many of you kind of want to get to see what's on the inside when you see a building go up uh, in a community yeah. like Fergus Falls. We're so curious. Yeah, well, today is your license to snoop. Um, <laughs> we have a Love community that. open house, uh, 430 to 630 today. Um, I suppose it's kind of like a ribbon cutting, but there's no ceremony. There's no program. It's just really no laid speeches. back. No speeches. <laughs> um, just some good food, a uh, good time to uh, swing in and meet our leaders and get a chance to snoop around the building. Uh, churches are really good for saying, hey, come check it out on our terms on Sunday morning. But sure. we want to just invite you in and uh, just a license to kind of look around. Um, you can check out check out some of our um, technology. There's there's quite a bit there. So for those of you that are interested in that, you can kind of get backstage and see what that looks like. Oh, cool. I, and you don't often hear backstage used with church. Yeah. So that's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. That we, you know, with the, the online platforms available and we have a second campus in Battle Lake. Uh, we do quite a bit of video work uh, to make that happen. And so the technology, um, I don't understand it, uh, but it's pretty <laughs> fascinating and I do enjoy getting to take it in. So, uh, but yeah, come come out today, 4.30 to 6.30 uh, anytime and swing in. 
and you can kind of get a chance to look around and learn more about uh, why we we had to expand. And, uh, you know, Bethel Church has been around in Fergus for more than 100 years. Wow, that's amazing. And if you go back, there's a history every 20 years of needing to expand. And so that's 2020 fantastic. came kind of right on cue. Um, <laughs> and, and so uh, here we go again. And, you know, we had... We tried kind of all the things that you can try to make do with with too many people coming to your space. You know, we added services. We did, tried parking lot shuttles. We tried parking off site. We added Sunday school hours. And you get to a point where making do just doesn't cut it anymore. Sure. And then a big change has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've been, been working through that. We uh, began the planning in 2019. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Time it, flies when you're having fun, but yeah. I can imagine doing that construction project amidst a pandemic. Right. Yeah, and, that was a little interesting. <laughs> and building supply crisis and all those different things, shortages. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Probably a good way to say it, but I can only imagine that the result is fantastic. Yeah, and so there's a lot of fun stories inside those that building in that time frame. And so, again, if you come out tonight, you can chat with all of our leaders and learn more about how that worked. And um, it, it worked quite well. We did delay a year. We were ready to start in 2020 in that spring. And, <laughs> and then surprise. Yeah. And, stay and home, everyone. <laughs> doing a fundraising campaign besides. And so we held off a year. Um, and so we've been in the space and using it since uh, November of this last year um, and kind of fine tuning things, figuring out how we use it and what we need to change. And so now we're excited to invite the community in to check it out. Uh, and we really have a desire for the building to be a blessing to the community. It's not just for us. Sure. We didn't build it so we could be more comfortable. Um, in fact, we, we talked with Mayor Ben Shire when we were drawing up plans and said, what does the community need and, and how can we be a part of that? Um, and we have people from the community coming in and using our space all the time. Uh, in fact, next weekend, Otter Cove is using the space for their fundraiser. Their character um, breakfast coming up. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They'll be at Bethel for that. Um, we've got service clubs coming in and meeting there. Um, we bring uh, M State in every now and then and work with their football team um, and really work with many in the community. Uh, so we're excited for everybody to see it and perhaps understand how it could be used for the community. Right. Great opportunity today. Open house starts at 4.30. 4.30 to 6.30. And for folks um, that aren't familiar with Ferguson, Falls. Where is Bethel located? Sure. We are located on the west end of town, right off of Elcott. Uh, and so you can you can join us there. Um, you can't miss it if you get down by Elcott. We're right next to what people might know as the castle, um, that Hillcrest. Hillcrest. Um, so we're on that end of town, but come on out. If you can't make it and you want to uh, see what's happening or what has happened and what we're all about, you can check out our website, uh, BethelLutheran.Church. Fantastic. Well, Kate, great day. Congratulations on making it through the construction process and a great opportunity for folks to get out and uh, check out the facility. And, and when you're touring, be thinking of ways that uh, groups or things that you're associated with can potentially take advantage of and use this space for more things. So yeah. we thank everyone on the Bethel team for making this a great space for our community. So Good day to celebrate today. Head on out there starting at 4.30. Thanks, Lisa. You bet. Well, we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're talking about renovating spaces and new things. And I'd like to welcome the new owners, uh, Imran and Maya, from, well, they've come here from all the way from Seattle and have purchased what was formerly the Super 8 in Fergus Falls, now Hotel 8. And Maya, uh, again, on behalf of Fergus Falls, welcome to Minnesota. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, you guys have purchased what was the Super 8 and are now remodeling. So tell us a little bit about the, uh, you know, the, the plans and what's been happening so far. Yeah, so we're really excited. This is our first hotel. Um, we have already redone some, but we have big plans for what's coming. We've redone some of the lobby. We've redone one of the rooms kind of in the style we're looking towards and then Slowly over the course of the year, we're going to go through all the rooms, fix anything that needs fixing because it is a little bit of an older building and redo the paint, redo the floors, just give it a new look and a kind of a new kind of atmosphere. Right. And it's it's kind of like, you know, we were chatting uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of like you bought a 31 bedroom, 31 bath home. And that's a pretty big undertaking when you think of renovations. <laughs> it is a big undertaking. We're trying to take it one step at a time. Right. Well, I've, you can follow them on Facebook, too, and they've got some great pictures. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that we got you guys in on the show um, before the summer got busy, because we know a lot of people travel to the Fergus Falls area, including our family members who travel. Well, now with the new Hotel 8, folks can 
uh, have their family and friends stay at a nice, comfortable, renovated space and not be in your space too long. Because, you know, what? not there something that they say about friends and family and fish staying around for more than three days? <laughs> 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 no. So we, you, you've got a great, warm and welcoming space here at, uh, at Hotel 8. Thank you. That's what we want. You know, we want to kind of keep it in that budget point, but also, you know, we want it to be super clean, super comfortable and welcoming. And we want people to feel like they can just relax. We get a lot of people who, you know, they're driving across the state or they're going to North Dakota and they're tired when they get there. So we just want to offer them some snacks and a TV and a warm bed and just make it you know, comfortable for them so they can either stay and explore the area or get back on the road safely. Well, and speaking of getting on the road, you guys have something that not every hotel in town has with some uh, parking uh, that's really great for um, big trucks. Yes, (laughs) we do try to be very accommodating with people driving semi trucks, horse trailers. We have a huge parking lot that's off street in the back, so it's safe. Big trucks can park there. We can fit probably 10 big trucks back wow. there. So it's a great space for that. Um, we're pet friendly as well. So people who bring their kids or their dogs, we don't turn anyone away. But that is fantastic. Yeah, you've got great facility and, you know, under new ownership too. So you guys can really make the changes, whatever you want, whatever you see that things need. You're not tied to what the brand says. So exactly. Which is fantastic. That was a big part of our decision to go independent as well because we saw that this is a really unique, special town and we wanted to be able to incorporate people's feedback into what we do and not just have to follow the brand rules. Yeah, and so when folks come and they check in or they send their friends or family, you guys are there on site too. Yes, we check people in every day. We're there (laughs) in the morning, we're there at night. You're there all hours. (laughs) Well, thank you for taking some time uh, to come and visit with us. We encourage folks to, can folks just pop on out there too and just say, hey, I want to check it out because we've got a family reunion this summer. We've got something going on. Absolutely. Anybody who has questions, we'd love it if you just stop by. We're happy to show you some of the rooms. Come check out the new lobby. Um, We're also, if you have any friends or family coming to visit right now, we are doing a promotion. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, on Monday, we're randomly going to be selecting one of our followers to win two nights for the price of one. And you can transfer that. It never expires. So even if you've got parents coming to visit over Christmas, feel free to enter that. Well, that is fantastic. Well, again, follow Hotel 8 on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. Um, They are conveniently located. I think we could probably see them from Leighton Broadcasting, but you're here on the west end of town. Um, You can see Hardee's right from the where you guys are at. So great convenient location right off Interstate 94. And uh, again, welcome to fabulous Fergus Falls and to Minnesota. And we're so glad uh, that you guys are the new owners of Hotel 8. Thank you. We're really glad to be here. You bet. Well, we are going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk more about new and renewal and renovating. So stay tuned. I've worked for the county for seven years. I started out as a attendant at a transfer station over in Henning and it became possible for me to come to Fergus here and start driving truck for the recycling center. So I did that and then I worked my way up and became the manager of the household hazardous waste program. The county does have a great opportunity because there are constantly jobs that are available in different departments or even within your own department. Um, And those jobs are posted and um, are encouraged by other um, employees to apply for those jobs. So once you get into the county, you do have an opportunity to um, apply for different jobs. So that was a great appeal for this job just because I knew that once I got in, if I didn't love the position, but I actually did love the position, I still had the opportunity to do something different. It's, it's been a, a great experience. I mean, I came here fresh out of college, not really knowing at that point where I was going to end up. And here we are 10 years later and I'm still here, so. It's a great work environment. And I, I'd actually, uh, when I started, I, I was fortunate enough that there was a lot of older guys that had been here a long time. <clears throat> and they were all getting pretty close to retirement. So they were willing to share a lot of information with me uh, and they kind of taught me the the ins and outs of the, especially the courthouse at that time. And we're kind of in a similar position right now. You know, a lot of people that are in our department uh, within 10 years are gonna retire. So, you know, it's a perfect opportunity because there'd be some real good room for advancement.
you know, day to day, I mean, one day I'm, I'm working with drainage questions and then the next day working with, you know, individuals at Phelps Mill Park. Um, also, we're, we're building the new Perm to Pelican uh, Trail. So there's a lot of questions and, and, and dealings with engineering firms and property owners and it's, you just never know what you're gonna have on a day to day. Well, it was great that working for the county, I did love being an administrative specialist. I'm very technical and organized, so that part was fun. But my heart was creative. Um, I came here as a graphic designer. So once I got, once I was able to uh, fulfill that role in my current position, I just felt like I had returned to something that I loved. And that um, it makes it easy to come to work every day. You get to do something that you love and something that's super fun. I don't you know, think Otterdale County has given me many opportunities to better myself, you know, through different various trainings. Uh, I mean, if, if there's any training that you need done um, that you feel that you're not strong with, um, yeah, you can you definitely request that, hey, you know, I'm not strong in this area. I can I could do some training on it. Uh, the county is definitely willing to work with you on that and help you uh, grow in your career. You also get your weekends. Um, some roles in the county do um, require you to work weekends, but most of the positions do not. So I can jut off to the lake on a Friday evening and not worry about coming back. I'm a hockey mom, so when I have to go to tournaments, I don't have to worry about I've got to take leave to take them to a tournament. So. Uh, weekends are great and the benefits are great as far as health care. So I really think that that's one of the ways that it, uh, Ottertail County excels. There's a lot of opportunities that you can grow with here at Ottertail County. They're very easy to work with. They're very understanding. And if you're willing to work, I think that you can kind of go wherever you want. So first question is the easiest. Could you say in your name for me? Nick Larson, a social worker with Ottertail County Human Services, specifically children's mental health case management. And I'm Sarah Stepp Larson. I'm an assistant county attorney with Ottertail County. I grew up in Iowa. Since I've been little, my family has always come up for the summers, um, at least for a vacation, if not for the whole summer, because my mom's a school teacher. Um, so we'd come up to Minnesota, and uh, I must have been like eight or nine when we started going to Otter Tail Lake Campground. And then Nick used to be over on South Turtle, um, and his family moved over to our campground. So I think I met him when I was 12, maybe. And so then we got to know each other that way through the lake, and we've been dating since high school. Well, to be honest, ever since I can remember, I've been camping, so my weekends have always been at the lake. We went to Otter Tail, County, or Otter Tail Lake, specifically the campground there, and that's what we did every weekend. Mm -hmm. And eventually, as we got older, I would spend the summers out there where I got a job in the summer, so I would leave Fargo for the summer, stay up at a camper, and, and it was really nice. So and that's when we got to really spend more time together. Mm -hmm. Um, now at the county attorney's office, I'm assistant county attorney, and so I work in the civil division. And a lot of what I deal with is child in need of protection or services cases, uh, child support, um, a few other types of human services, cases and appeals and things of that nature. I graduated with a criminal justice degree, never in a million years thought I'd go into social work, but through experience in that field, I kind of realized maybe that'd be something I'd be interested in. And there was an opening at Ottertail County Human Services. We love the summers, especially um, the days are longer, and so, you know, on, after a work day, we can pick up the kids, we'll go to the Y, um, we'll come home and have dinner, and then we'll go to one of the parks that's around our house. We've got a lot of parks within walking distance, which is great. Um, the kids love to do the river walk downtown, um, so we'll sometimes go down through there and, and walk through there and see the little waterfalls, and then go have dinner downtown. Um, and then if it's the weekend, usually, even Thursday nights, we'll head out to Otter's Hill um, and stay out at the campground and then just drive in for work. It's only a half an hour jump and you can spend the next night at the lake, so I wouldn't you. Um, but then uh, we've got tons of folks out there that we stay with and, and have friendships with. I'm, so I moved from Fargo to here, so imagine Sarah comes from a small town of 1,500 people. She moves to Fergus, it's, it's a big city. I moved from Fargo to Fergus, it's a small city, and. Um, I loved Fargo, I had so many hobbies and that's where all my friends were and to where I stand now I could never see myself moving back to Fargo, I love it here. I love the, the friendships we've built, I love the people I work with and I, I just i am very satisfied this is where I want to raise our families. So.
News Talk 1250 KPRF. Listen anytime, anyplace with the new Fergus Now app on your phone as we have Chamber on the Air with Lisa Workman. That's nice. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Well, a lot of just so much cool stuff going on in our town. So many new things and exciting things. Like I said, you know, check out the Chamber's website. Follow us on Facebook. FergusFalls.com is a place to go to find out about events and activities and to get all the details about all the Chamber members that we've talked about so far so far see we're making up words again uh <laughs> who we visited with so far today you can check out our business directory there are hot deals jobs the special events calendar um, and all the contact information for all of our 300 plus members that make fergus falls a great place to be in business and i welcome on the show next brett delage with gate city bank and brett you guys just introduced a new program that is really going to renovate and renew homes in Fergus Falls. So let's talk a little bit about the neighborhood plan that's that you guys, you know, presented the big check at the city of Fergus Falls. Let's talk about that. Thank you, Lisa. We, yeah, we presented the neighborhood impact program. We've been actually been doing it with Fergus Falls for a couple of years now. We just got the limit raised up to a million dollars dedicated to the city of Fergus Falls. Everything. Wow. Wait, wow. Yeah. Wow. A million dollars <laughs> is being put into the community through home renovations. Yep. It is. Oh my gosh. It is on the customers to make sure they take advantage of that as well. It's a first come first serve basis. Um, all they have to do is go to the city of Fergus Falls to apply for the program. Everything we do at Gate City revolves around creating a better way of life for our customers and communities and team members. And this is one of the ways we can do that. Yeah, what a great program. So million dollars, and this is low interest financing that folks can take advantage of. And so they get the application from this through the city of Fergus Falls, which, by the way, they're connected on the Chamber's website, so pretty easy to find. And um, th- what are some of the things that these funds can be used for, Brett? There are There's a plethora of different <laughs> things these funds can be used for. Qualifying projects range from patio additions and new garages to safety repairs like furnace re- replacements and accessibility adjustments if you have structural damage to uh, you can use these funds to firm that up sure um, additions to new bedrooms just a whole bunch of different things this program can be used for wow so as, as folks are thinking spring which last week was winter this week was spring um, now they start thinking about the the renovation projects or the things that they you know need to look at or, or maybe they've realized now that the snow has melted that their deck is a little squishy you know we you know you might need to replace some things on that so you guys have some great funds available that folks can use for these programs we do uh, like I said up to a million dollars minimum requirement is ten thousand dollars but it can also go up to a hundred thousand dollars and unfortunately once the funds are used up they're they're gone right so folks the first step is to go and apply um do they need to know all the specific details of the project cost um before they apply it is preferred that they do have contractor quotes um they can start with the application, but to get final approval, they would have to have contractor sure, quotes. Sure, absolutely. Well, we want to know that, uh, that that the project is going to fall in line with those things. But, I mean, my head is spinning right now of all the things, all the projects that can be done from roofing to siding to replacing your windows. Like you said, new air conditioning, new, new furnace, um, accessibility things. So if folks need to build a ramp to get into their home, um, this would fall under those types of projects too. That would qualify as well. So are there any things that you can think of that wouldn't qualify? Like, what if I wanted to put in a swimming pool? That I, that would not qualify. Okay, it, see, I knew going that. Going on I knew vacation with, with the funds wouldn't qualify. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. and <laughs> we, we do handle all the disbursements as well. We would just need the invoices from the contractors. Sure. Well, and one of the things, you know, we know in our community, too, that sometimes it's hard to 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 come up with funds to do some major renovations like this. And again, you guys are offering this at a very low rate uh, that folks can borrow the money for. And we, you know, we've all been watching some of the rates tick up a little bit. So this is a great way to fix up the home that you're in and not have to pay an arm and a leg. (laughs) Exactly. This, this market right now is more of a fixer up market than a purchase market. Absolutely. Well, they are going to, we're going to be keeping our, um, chamber members that do renovations very busy places like you know manufacturing of vector windows and builders first source and home depot and fergus home and hardware 
boy, all the different uh, contractors that are available for all the different things. So folks, start thinking, start making your list, getting in con contact with the contractors, uh, fill out the application with the city, and then uh, you'll work directly with Gate City Bank to fix up. We're fixing up our neighborhoods now. So Brett, uh, on behalf of the chamber and our community, we thank Gate City Bank for uh, rolling out the Neighborhood Impact Program. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. You here. bet. Well, again, if you want to know more details about the members that have been on our show today, check out our website at fergusfalls.com. Uh, there you'll find the events calendar and you'll be able to attend a ribbon cutting next week with Vector Windows. Our chamber member mixer is Wednesday afternoon. And then on Friday, we are doing the refillery ribbon cutting. I do believe we're going to be doing the ribbon cutting before too long with Splash Express, the new car wash also on the west side of our community too so again on behalf of the fergus falls chamber we're so thankful that all of you guys are here and welcome to imran and maya to fergus falls uh moved all the way from the seattle washington area so uh, stop in and say hello to them sometime at hotel eight and of course stop out to bethel church today for the open house today from 4 30 to 6 30. if you can't make it today i would imagine there are services on sunday as well that folks can come to too so again this has been chamber on the air. I'm Lisa Workman, wishing everyone a happy spring day, and we will talk to you again in May. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Now I it can go. go by really fast.